So now we will solve this problem a cooling of a hot fluid in a tank. So at first I will read the question and I'll try to understand the problem for you. So a rigid tank contains a hot fluid that is cooled while being stirred by a pedal wheel. So initially you, you can see the schematic here uh, while the you know the dimensions all the values which are given for this problem. So the internal energy U1 is given 800 kilojoule and this is actually the initial internal energy so we are using E1. So during the cooling process the fluid loses 500 kilojoule of heat and the paddle wheel does 100 kilojoule of work on the fluid. So this is actually the shaft work you can see the rotation and the shaft here so it is actually you know, the shaft to work and that is clearly just written here the fluid you know it is it loses the heat and the pedal wheel does 100 kilojoule work on the fluid so that means you know it's the you know the energy in and you can see it's clearly written here you know the work s has that means you can say shaft so the sharp torque in that means it is actually the you know the energy input determine the final internal energy so u2 we need to calculate u2 and neglect the energy stored in the pedal wheel yeah so um, we actually go, we are going to neglect the energy stored in the pedal wheel so that we can write in our assumption section so what we can see guys here uh, you know that's the energy in it is actually the shaft energy in you know, this one and the, you know the energy is just going out from the system so you can see this arrow here the 500 kilojoule that means this fluid it loses that heat to the surroundings so that's actually energy out so we know energy in energy out here and the internal energy the initial internal energy is known and you know the u2 is unknown we need to calculate that so the most important thing here is it is a rigid tank okay so rigid tank means you know um it you know the meaning of the rigid that means it is kind of the stationary thing and the velocity you know will not change the elevation will not change and the kinetic and the potential energy difference it will be zero so we'll write it down later on so let's uh, solve this problem so if we you know if we start with this solution so what i can what we can write here is at first actually what we need to do is we need to write down some assumptions okay so let's write down some assumptions the first assumption is in this problem it is given the tank is raised so if it is raised so that means you know uh, the elevation and the velocity is not changing so we know from the definition the potential and the kinetic energy difference let's say the kinetic energy difference delta ke we say the kinetic energy ke the formula we know it is uh, half m v square so let's say v2 square minus v1 square know this formula for kinetic energy and the potential energy formula we know it is actually the mass gravity and the elevation j2 minus j1 so when we're talking about this is a rigid tank or a stationary tank so that means actually this velocity is not changing or the elevation is not changing so this is same that means this change you know v1 v2 or j1 j2 this is actually constant it's not changing so we can say v1 and v2 are equal so that means this term it will be zero so that means actually we can write it is equal to zero it is equal to zero so this is our first assumption say the you know as it is a rigid stationary tank so the change of the potential and the kinetic energy it will be zero so that means that you know the energy valence from if we consider the energy valence then it will be you know the change of the you know the energy delta e it will be equal to the delta u it will be equal to the internal energy so this is actually the only form of energy is here and the second assumptions um, 
it is given in the question it says neglect the the energy stored in the paddle wheel so you know the we can say the you know the the paddle wheel energy paddle wheel energy neglected all right so um this is all of our assumptions so now we are going to solve the problem so you know guys we need to calculate the u2 that means the internal energy the, the the final internal energy we know the initial internal energy and we know the shaft torque in you know the energy out we know everything so let's uh, solve the problem now i just put this uh, uh, figure here for better underst better understanding then we do not need to go back to the previous slide so when we will start with the solution so now just start with the solution so what um we found here this is a closed system okay so we're solving problem for the closed system so as it is a closed system you know the definition of the closed system that means you know uh, only energy can transfer or you know energy can cross the boundary but no mass can cross the boundary no mass can cross the boundary so and it is also a rigid tank so it's not moving yeah so we know uh, actually the heat is the fluid is, is actually loses the heat and in the shaft work it is we are getting the shaft torque on the fluid so from the energy balance equation what we can write guys from the energy balance equation we know the energy in the energy out it is equal the the rate of change of the energy delta e so uh, here uh, actually the energy in is the w s h in that means the shaft torque so we can write it down it is the w w s h in minus energy out is actually this energy you know the q out q out it is equal delta e we said it is actually the internal energy e1 and u2 right e1 and u2 yes so here you know the mass uh, it's we, we can we can write this internal energy equations different ways sometimes if we know the mass then we can use the mass formula but here actually you know um it is there is a tank and no mass crosses the boundary so we only know the u and u2 so we'll apply that formula here so what we can write guys we can write it like this uh, let's say the w s h in minus q out it is equal um u2 minus u1 the change of the you know the internal energy the final and the in initial internal energy so now what we know here is this work the shaft torque is given 100 kilojoule okay and the workout is 500 kg and it is equal u2 we don't know that and u1 we know it is 800 kilojoules so if we now simple simplify this expression then we will get u2 it is equal 400 kilojoule so that means uh, the final internal energy it is equal to 400 kilojoule so what we did guys here the the most important assumption was you know the kinetic and the potential energy is zero here the difference is zero because it is a stationary uh, objects so it's not moving so the velocity are same the elevation is not changing so we can easily say yeah the delta ke and delta p is zero and then the rest of the calculation i think it was pretty straightforward so i believe you understand this and i would tell you please find out some similar problem from the you know the end of this chapter and yeah just practice some similar types of problem the most important thing actually we need to understand you know the problem especially we need to clearly write down the assumptions and we need to understand actually the energy balance equations for this problem anyway so we'll discuss um, more detail during the lecture so i think that's it for now